I'm going to do a driving tour of the Mountainside Villas at Massanutten today. So I will drive through all 175 units. They are not in perfect order. Um, part of the reason is uh, the upper road, they aren't in order on Middlecoff Drive. The units are not all in order. Uh, the other reason is where I started. This year I stayed in Unit 53, um, so I started from that point. I actually stayed here in 2018 and 2019. This video was done in August of 2020. Um, I will have a separate video um, showing the inside of the units, but because this is 17 minutes long, just showing you the driving through of all 175 units, I didn't want to group them together. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Mountainside Villas, they are two bedrooms with a loft in addition. So you have a king size bed in the master bedroom, you have a queen size bed in your second bedroom, and then there's an open loft that overlooks the living room area. And that has two single beds. They're set up more like sofas when you arrive, but you can move the back pillows that they just have loose, and they're just two single beds. There's also a little small table with two seats up there and a coffee table. Um, in the two bedrooms, they have closets, they have dressers, and then they have TVs. Um, the master bedroom has one mounted to the wall. They have your basic cable channels, and there's internet access. They give you a code when you check in, and they actually have a separate internet access for if you're trying to use gaming. Um, so I guess it doesn't uh, clog up the network. And again, you'll get an individual code for that. So at the beginning of this video, I showed you the Welcome Center. That's where you go when you're checking in. Um, the first two years that we stayed here, we stayed um, by renting per night. And we booked that through Hotels.com. Um, this individual, um, from what I can tell and what I asked when I was in the, the Welcome Center, they do not rent directly. You either have to own a timeshare or you would rent through a third-party website like Coastels.com or Priceline, or I heard them mention something called Tripforth, a website called Tripforth. Um, this year is our first year owning a timeshare. We don't own one at Massanutten, but we traded um, points, and it was a really good deal. Um, the only downside I saw to that was when we arrived, um, the lady said that, the unit I was originally quoted on getting that they had moved me because there was some type of problem. And when I asked about any other options, she said, well, people that come in through RCI um, can get moved because they don't have the highest priority. They're not in, you know, owners directly. So it, it sounded like probably the people that, that own directly through the company they have or own at Massanut and get the probably the best units or, or get their requests. It actually ended up to be a silver lining because the unit we were supposed to be getting was 46. And although it seemed like it would have been an awesome location, it had a pretty steep hill um, resulting, when I drove by, it looked like a really small backyard area. So I actually liked the fact that we ended up in 53 because there was a nice wooded area behind that and that actually made for some really pretty scenery. The first year we stayed in Unit 2, and that one was really nice because it had only a few steps to get down from the parking area to where you would walk into the unit. Um, we got spoiled, and at the very end of the video, there's going to be a picture of those steps showing you um, that Units 1 through 5 are in that first group with Unit number 2 that I'm talking about. That was really easy for loading and unloading. And that one had a uh, kind of a backyard that was up against a um, golf course. This whole golf course weaves through by the villa. So the chances of seeing the golf course are pretty high. It doesn't matter what unit you're in. Um, you will notice probably a, there's a lot of steps and hills um, when you're accessing these units. Now, the unit we stayed in last year was unit 42. And... That one had a um, large staircase to go down from the parking area. Obviously, you had to walk back up to get to your parking um, again, but it had a driveway on the side. Even though it wasn't directly by the unit, it was um, connected to a 
sidewalk. So when you're unloading your items, you could drive down to that um, driveway, take your stuff out, wheel it or carry it over to your unit. So it wasn't as much of the going up and down the stairs. This year, there was no true driveway access. We did notice that the golf cart path was there. And if you didn't have any golfers coming, there was kind of a gravel area you could pull off to the side. Um, we didn't notice that when we moved in. We noticed it when we were leaving because we had seen some maintenance workers use that gravel area. Um, truthfully, it worked, but it, it wasn't ideal. Um, so this year in Unit 53, that was the worst access that we'd had in the three years. We really had to do a lot of going up and down um, to get back to our car. So if you have any kind of knee problems or back problems, um, these units um, can be challenging for that. But the whole purpose of this video driving through is to kind of show you what you're dealing with. Hopefully this will help somebody out if you're trying to maybe request a certain area. I'm sure if you call the office and you tell them that you know you have an issue, you can't do as many steps, they could probably find something that um, has one of those side driveways so somebody could either drop you off in the vehicle. Like the one we're passing right now, I can't tell if that's going down to the units or not because it could be a cart path, but I, it looks like it does go down to the units because there's that steep stairway. Um, a lot of them are easier to tell. Like you'll have a driveway in between the two clusters of buildings and it'll kind of Y off to the left and Y off to the right. And you can definitely tell that you can put your car there. But yeah, you can see there's a lot of privacy with all these trees, but it makes getting to the unit not, not a direct route. So when you're bringing groceries in and out, um, you know, suitcases, that type of thing, it's, it's not too much fun. Yeah, there you can see that's a little driveway access. So that would make it easy to drive down there. Um, the units have a full kitchen. They have a full size refrigerator, freezer with ice maker. Um, they have a Gen Air grill that you can cook inside, which is a neat feature. They have a full stove, they have a microwave, they have blender, uh, can opener, they have all the pots and pans and things like that to cook with. Um, so definitely I know a lot of people will bring groceries and cook in their units and there's dumpsters out front by your parking area in all of the, um, in all, in near all of the units. They have some recycling centers too, space throughout. Um, they do have lighting at night. Like you can see, this is at dusk. So on those walkways, they do have lighting. There's plenty of parking. Um, we've stayed here three years in a row, all in the August time frame, and we've never had any trouble getting a parking spot. Um, the units are really pretty. You'll see on the inside video, they have big windows in the living room area that overlook like the back of your, your condo. Looking out to like some trees or a golf course view. So I hope this video helps you um, kind of determine, you know, maybe where you might feel most comfortable. Or let's say you, like me, called and you got your unit number and you're just curious, you know, what it's going to look like from the outside. Um, yeah, there's another one of those gravel accesses that make it really nice. Now we're getting ready to come up here in about two more buildings um, to where I stayed the first year in unit two. And that was really near the beginning of the community, near the welcome center. So you can see the hills getting less steep and we're going to come up to the one through five units in a minute here. So there's the golf course in the, the background there. And so that's going to be number five, four, three, two, one. And so you can't really see the stairs in the video, but you can in the picture that I put in the end. This one was a really easy unit to get to. There was a very small set of steps. So I'll talk to you a little bit about Massanutten itself, and then maybe I'll put some music on. So Massanutten is a huge resort. Um, primarily, it has winter sports, but they say it's a four seasons resort, and I tend to agree because there's lots of things to do in the summertime. Um, where they have the adventure park, they have zip lining, they have summer tubing, 
they have um, a little area where you can do like gem mining with a little water sluice you can see a deer up there there are deer everywhere um, roaming around especially at dusk and early in the morning um, they're pretty tame um, I can tell like a lot of people they've been around a lot of people and I think that people will bring food and feed them they tell you when you check in not to feed them but it's very tempting they're so adorable to feed them something that you know is is natural that you know would wouldn't hurt them so um yeah that's all I'll say about that and <laughs> they're just so pretty and adorable but um, they say the you know fawns don't get stressed if you see one alone because the mom is is gone off to do her thing and she will come back and check on them so they say don't try to rescue a fawn and if you see it there for several days of course there is a number they give you that you can call if you're concerned about it um, but they are very clear they give you a little information sheet that says don't try to rescue the fawn the fawn is just fine if it's alone for a few hours even a, even a, even a full day so okay so this is the upper units that we're driving by um, there is a water park at Massanutten it's really awesome it's indoor outdoor it was not open this year um, fully due to the COVID outbreak that the whole country is dealing with right now um, they did have the large outdoor pool and small outdoor pool open and they had a reduced admission for that we didn't go just because there are complimentary pools included with staying here. Um, there's two huge outdoor pools, one's at Woodstone Meadows and the other one's at the Mountain Peak Pool. They're more than adequate. Um, so we enjoyed those and I will try to do some pictures um, at the end of the video too of those. They were great outdoor pools. Um, one of them the mountain peak pool had a nice diving board and you got to see lots of kids jumping off and enjoying that and then they had a little adult swim at the top of every hour they would do about 10 minutes for an adult swim um, it was very nice and well maintained lots of seating area um, they did have a little bit of reduced capacity of course because of covid but it never you know it, it never felt crowded or anything like that um, because of that so that was actually that was actually a bonus so um, the resort did seem you know to be about the same uh, capacity um, as far as like the people number of people I saw but of course they had all the social distancing in place they had the you know six foot and ten foot you know markings for people um, you know to stay away and like when we went and ate in the restaurants they had the social distancing at the tables um, the two main restaurants that I've eaten at at the resort are the Campfire Grill and Base Camp. Campfire Grill has indoor and outdoor seating and it has a theme like you're camping basically. And the food there is really good. I've eaten there twice. Both times I had really good um, beef skillet dish, kind of like a stir fry almost on a cast iron skillet with some vegetables and potatoes. And then I had a skillet cookie with some chocolate and pretzels and ice cream on top. That was delicious. Um, we had cornbread as like a starter appetizer. That was delicious. Um, there is a place called Base Camp and that has the majority outdoor seating. Um, it is really good food too, but both times I've been there, the weight was... Um, quite a while for service I think it's just because they're walking so far you know to get your drinks and your food because it's not the typical like an indoor restaurant where everything's real central for them it was busy too of course um, but that's a really neat place to sit outside um, there is mini golf there are bumper cars um, there's a bungee jump type thing that didn't appear to be open this year there's an ice cream shop there in that little Massanutten village area uh, that had soft serve ice cream and it was pretty good um, we went off the resort one night and we went to uh, this place called the dairy bar that was off of the main road 33 and that was really good they have rotating flavors and then chocolate and vanilla every day I really enjoyed that and then when we ate off the resort another afternoon we ate at Hank's barbecue that was delicious I would highly recommend that the barbecue was really fresh and tender 
and had a really good flavor. They had two different sauces that you could pair with it. And uh, the sides were delicious as well. And that was only about a mile outside of the main resort entrance. So I would highly recommend Hank's. Um, that was really tasty. I've never eaten at the barbecue place within the resort. So I did, can't speak to how that is. Um, and I haven't had any of the other, there's something called the snack shack. I haven't had any food there either. We mostly cooked in our condo, um, because that's easy. And our daughter, she just loves to eat at home. She's one of those kids who doesn't really care to eat out. She'd rather just hang out at home and, and do other things during the day. So this is coming out of the result the condo community and I went and did a U-turn so I could show you a little bit of the golf course and then come back to the community so I could show you my unit like straight on which is 53. If you can see there's lots of beautiful scenery. Um, if you continued up this road where I had originally the direction I had headed you will come to a mountain overlook area in about two miles. It's a beautiful view. You can park right at the guardrail and look over the mountain it's a really cool place to take some pictures and we actually saw a big family using a drone and they were using the drone to do like a family picture video shoot um, and it was it was really cool to see because they were all waving at the drone and then the drone flew off and uh, yeah you could tell somebody somebody definitely had like a photo photo hobby to have a, a really nice drone like that so all right well there's the stairs, there's three sets of them. It's getting dark, so you really can't tell. But there's three sets of stairs to go up to Unit 53. And here's a picture of the mini golf course. It has lots of cool features, and that's the mountain, scenic mountain overlook is what they call it. There's signs for it to tell you how to go up there, and there's a little hiking trail. And then that's our first year unit, Unit 2. You can see there's only about maybe a dozen steps real easy steps to get up to the parking area. And then that was last year, Unit 42, that side driveway. In our upstairs balcony, that's the view looking from the back of Unit 53, the wooded area. And this is the Mountain Peak Pool. It's actually larger than the picture represents. And that's the inside of Campfire Grill. That's our booth when we were leaving. And there's my daughter doing the little gym mining. Um, that's the inside of the living room. And then next is the mini golf course. Thank you for watching. I hope you will like my video and subscribe to my channel. Bye.